Thank, thank you, and I, I want to thank everyone who's remained uh, to the end of this awesome SAGE's in-person meeting. For those of you who are also online, um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about a, a disease that makes up a decent part of my practice, and I think that's vexed many of us, as we've heard from the previous speakers. Here's my disclosure, which is not relevant to this talk today. So I want to start by showing this infographic that many of you know of that shows the overall trend of five-year cancer survival rates in the United States from 1970 to 1977, followed by 2007 to 2013. And as you can see at the top, we've really moved the needle uh, for all cancers significantly in this time frame. Uh, for something such as breast cancer, the um, overall survival has, has really significantly jumped. And even for something as abysmal as esophageal cancer, the rate has increased from 5% to roughly 20%. Conspicuously missing from the graph is pancreas cancer, which is down here at the bottom. And many of you know this. We have moved this needle slightly from 2.5% up to about 8%. It's now over 10% but still way at the bottom when you think of this in relation to other cancers. So with that backdrop, um, we'll talk a little bit about locally advanced pancreas cancer. What is it? What are ablation therapies? And I'll talk about some of the previous and ongoing trials. So we heard about the NCCN guidelines that uh, highlight locally, it, uh, locally advanced pancreas cancer as uh, effectively vascular involvement of greater than 180 degrees of the body and tail lesions of the SMA and celiac, greater than 180 degrees SMA celiac with or without aortic involvement. Regarding venous disease, this would include those patients with unre unreconstructable SMV portal vein due to the extensiveness. So if we zoom in, uh, we have a lesion here uh, that is 180 degrees interface of both the SMV and the SMA, making this uh, effectively a locally advanced lesion. When we look at the pancreatic cancer U.S. disease burden, there's about 60,000 new cases per year, 50,000 deaths. 52% uh, of these patients are deemed metastatic. 11% are, are quote unquote resectable, but we know from a previous speaker that many of these patients already have circulating tumor cells. So that leaves about uh, 22,000 or 30, 37% that are considered locally advanced. So a significant portion of the patients that we see with pancreatic cancer would be considered locally advanced. The overall survival, again, as known as for locally advanced is the same as that for all comers, which is about 10% five-year survival. But we also know that the lo not all locally advanced cases are the same. Uh, this is an excellent study in surgery that further subdivided patients into type A and type B based on the increased vascular involvement. Uh, one might see with type B is greater than 270 degree encasement of the SMA, greater than 180 degree abutment or encasement of the celiac. Uh, with the aortic involvement, and then extension to the hepatic arteries, right and left uh, hepatic arteries. And what this group showed is that actually if you, if you break this down into type A and type B, that patients with type A locally advanced disease have much better outcomes. So this hammers home the point that not all locally advanced pancreas cancer is the same. So we, when we, we got to keep that in mind when we look at these ablation therapy, especially when we think of the, the previous and ongoing studies that when we, we don't have a good breakdown of these type A versus type B and, and how this locally advanced gets, gets determined. So what are ablation therapies? So effectively it's broken down into freezing or cryoablation, uh, thermal energy, radio frequency ablation, microwave ablation, and finally, irreversible electroporation. For the sake of the talk, I'm going to focus on these, which are locally given and not, uh, not radiation, uh, ablation, uh, ablative radiation, which I think is a different, different type of therapy. 
So the previous trials, there, there are not many, uh, and they, they've been nicely summarized in, in this series that showed um, about 204, sorry, excuse me, 340 patients who underwent cryoablation with about a seven to 30 month uh, median survival. And for RFA, uh, these patients underwent uh, RFA and um, mi microwave, so microwave and RFA, 296 patients had a median survival of about five to 25 months. And finally for IRE, again, about 268 patients with median survival around six to 24 months. So again, these are the numbers from the previous studies. And again, small numbers, wide range in the survival. There are some ongoing trials that, that I'll highlight. Uh, the first one is called the Pelican trial that is out of Netherlands. And this is, uh, for anyone in the room, has worked with the Dutch Pancreatic Cancer Group, excellent uh, schema that shows that all patients with locally advanced pancreas cancer would undergo four cycles of fulferinox or two cycles of gem uh, nab paclitaxel followed by expert review. And those who were deemed truly locally advanced would then undergo RFA plus chemotherapy versus ongoing chemotherapy alone. The goal is to recruit 228 patients in 16 centers in the Netherlands and Europe. Uh, the primary endpoint is overall survival, with secondary endpoints being pro progression-free survival, re resist response, CA99 and CEA response, quality of life, toxicity, pain, costs, and the immun immunomodulary effects of RFA. These results are expected in roughly 2023 or 2024, uh, so we will await those. The next trial is called the Crossfire trial, and this is a study that aims to recruit 138 patients to compare IRE to stereotactive ablative radiotherapy, cleverly called SABRE. Uh, the primary endpoint of this is overall survival with secondary endpoints that are very similar to those in the Pelican trial. And again, this is, uh, I, I don't have an update on this one. I, I tried to kind of find where this was in terms of the progress. The next one is called the direct trial. That is being run here in the United States. It is an industry-sponsored trial, and it's actually two studies that are going to be running concurrently. One is a randomized control trial, uh, randomizing patients to undergo three months of modified fulferinox, followed by uh, uh, evaluation. Uh, the one group will continue with standard chemotherapy and the other would undergo in situ uh, irreversible electroporation. And these endpoints are similar to those in the other studies. The second study is actually a registry, registry trial that will run alongside and these patients will basically be followed depending on what they're, they're deemed to undergo IRE versus conventional chemotherapy. There are uh, 528 patients in the randomized control trial, 532 in the registry. The primary endpoint is overall survival. The secondary endpoints are similar to the Pelican trial, and the results are uh, expected in 2025. So I think as we look to the future, I think there's several considerations regarding ablation therapies. Uh, we certainly eagerly await the level one data results, which hopefully will come in the next several years. Um, and I think if we do see some benefit for select patients, I think the next thought will be on what types of delivery methods there will be, um, percutaneous, image-guided, endoscopic, minimally invasive, open. So these will be the next things that we look at when it comes to ablation therapy. Um, and we talked a lot about in situ, which is effectively leaving the tumor in place, but I think there, the other area of, of interest is for margin accentuation, which is another, um, another therapy that, that will be looked at during this time frame as well. And then I think we have to remember that without therapy, these patients have less than one year overall survival. And this is a, a very 
uh, it's a poor outcome and we're, we're looking actively for ways to improve their quality and, and their time. So ultimately, we're at the end of the day, I think this is a question of getting someone from potentially 11 months overall survival to potentially 22 months. And I, I think that's what these studies are showing and that's what's gonna end up being uh, the value is if we can potentially extend these, the time for these patients. So in conclusion, uh, locally advanced pancreas cancer remains a diverse classification with significant heterogeneity in previous studies. Ablation therapies may have a role, but there's very limited data at this time. These ongoing trials will hopefully emerge with data in 2023. And at, at the end, I think it's, it's the question, can we give these patients more time? Thank you very much. Thank you.